Got the Freemax Marvos T pod device on the bench. I swear these names just keep getting weirder and weirder. What does Marvos T even mean? I don't know. Uh, and and pod, I don't know. Is it a pod really? <laughs> it's sort of. It's like a normal atomizer, but detachable with the magnetic thing. Okay. Anyway, I've got a bit of a cheat sheet here from Freemax, and you can have a little read of that. I'm probably not meant to show this, but um, I thought it was kind of interesting. I don't mind Freemax as a as a company. They've been pretty good to deal with. I um I like their products. I like their coils, and um their tanks and the Maxis Maxis uh, mods were pretty good. I did some reviews of them, some tests, and they were good, chunky, solid built mod. Um, I don't know, bit of a fanboy. They're not paying me to say any of that, obviously. But this guy, I don't know. I don't quite understand these styles of devices. They're sort of they're sort of somewhere in between, like a like a proper small pod and a and a bigger mod, and they never quite give you the power you want. I mean, they don't last as long. So it's just like running a single cell. Well, what do we got? Three thousand milliamp hour. Uh, internal battery so it's like just running a little single cell device which in that respect yeah it, it works pretty well but you know if you're running it at well depending on which which coil and which wattage you're sitting at between 40 and 80 watts you know if you're running this at 80 watts that 3000 milliamp hour is just not going to last at all it's not, probably going to give you about half a day i reckon um i never quite have the power but um the kind of thing i'm eh, not too sure about being a pod device, no 510, so you've got no choice of atomizer. You, you're stuck with this guy, and of course, then you have the bottom fill, and you know, always whinge about these rubber caps. Just messy, and you get the condensation in here, and you end up with liquid all over your fingers, and you've got to have a juice bottle with a small enough tip to fit in there. Um, otherwise, it ends up overflowing everywhere, and it's a complete mess. And I was thinking it'd want to be a bit well sealed in these pins here, because otherwise you're going to get liquid down into the device. Um, so anyway, as far as the design goes, eh, I don't know. I'm not a huge, huge fan. It's a lot of power for a small guy, that's for sure. It's like, this can crank out 70, 80 watts. So that's pretty good. <laughs> and it's a direct lung for the size. Um, but we're going to pull it apart. We're going to have a look. I don't think I'll do too many tests on this guy. It's not going to be anything too tricky. You've got three wattage levels, which means it's probably a pulse width modulated circuit, just a just a MOSFET or a couple of MOSFETs in there pulsing the battery to give you your average power corresponding to these levels. So you just got three three wattage levels you can set, which will be different duty cycles on the MOSFET. It'll be a pretty straightforward circuit. It'll have a charging circuit on there. And that's going to be about it. So I probably won't even test the output because it's... Meh. I don't know, it's like if it's not strong enough then you just dial it up a bit and uh, you can calculate it I doubt this is going to have a boost control, boost converter in it so you could just calculate 0.15 ohm at the range of battery voltages 3.3 say to about 4 uh, might do a calculation, stick that on the screen the theoretic, theoretical maximums what you can get and uh, that will just about do now we'll take it apart anyway which is going to be a little bit nasty, I think, trying to get this cap off. I'm probably going to, yeah, probably going to do a bit of damage to the device, but that's that's about par for the course, isn't it? Um, we'll have a look at the battery. That's the main thing I want to look at. Well, you know, they're saying real 3,000 milliamp hour internal battery. Okay, we'll we'll see about that. Um, two amp fast charging. I can check that as well. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Actually, I could probably do that on this video real quick and just see that it is doing the 2 amp fast charging. Yeah, so I, I don't mind this little um, little sheet they gave me, a little cheat sheet. It's kind of, um, they're not too pushy. They're, like, they're a little bit of saying, hey, you help promote the Marvos is better than the best suburb tank. Yeah, I don't know about that. But it's like, if the testing results turn out to be satisfying. Yeah, they're not saying, hey, you've got to do that or we won't, won't send you any more stuff. Because if I get this for free, they just send it. They just offer it to me to review. Um, but, you know, whether they keep doing that or not, I'm, I'm not going to fudge any reviews for the sake of still getting products because it's just not that important to me. If I want something, I'll just go buy it. Um, and, yeah, we fully understand the product can speak for itself. Only the product can speak for itself. Your reviews are based on your tests. 
be highly appreciated if you think it's good enough to recommend to others. Share your review. Yeah, fair call. Fair call. They're not. This is like meant to be just for me to see. So it's not. Um, you know, it's uh, insider stuff. That's what I'm getting at. Now I do like really the the older Firelook coils that had the two and three individual coils inside because the airflow was really choked down on those coils. And I felt like you got awesome flavor um, just because of that effect. Now I didn't much like the single coils in the Firelook, and this is like a single coil. It uses the same kind of mesh as the old Firelook tanks. But it's um it's very similar just to it to the single coil in the older fire Luke and what's the other name something pro <laughs> I can't remember now you know the other the other Freemax tanks that are super popular so it's like a single coil guy of one of them and yeah the flavor was really good on this this one it's really good but you know it's not like RDA flavor it's kind of it's a really subjective flavor. How do you how do you tell someone how good the flavor is? I would say for me, it was probably up there with the best tanks. Around about the fire looks, I feel like the doubles and triples in the fire looks are still a hair better, but pretty damn good still, but not quite RDA level. If that gives you an idea, you know you're not going to be disappointed with the flavor. You're not going to vape and go, oh, this is tasteless. No, it's fine. It's it's quite good. I don't know about best on the market. I yeah, how do you test that in a subject in a in an objective way? <laughs> you know. Anyway, we got 904 L stainless steel mesh seems to be what they're going for, and the T fiber is in that, that done with the last Cortec 4.0. That that's the same. They call it the same thing in the older fire look. Yeah, inspired. There we go. All right. Well. Yeah, as I said, it's going to be a little bit messy getting this apart. I think I'm going to have to be a bit violent, and I will have to get the chisel out and probably hammer that cap off, and we'll come back when that's done. Oopsie, <laughs> might have tightened the vice down a little bit too far there. Ah, <laughs> oh, sorry, Marvos. <laughs> the cap is off. I used a, um, what did I use? I used a chisel to get in there. <laughs> Whoopsie. Uh, so there's a bit of foam in the end there. A little bit of protection, physical protection for the battery rattling around. Nice to see that the while we're here, while we're destroying things, nice to see that they're using tinned conductors on the wire. That's kind of nice. That prevents corrosion rather than just bare copper. Okay, here we go. Now we're in. Um, just hammered this top cap out of the tube now of course none of the devices we use are user serviceable so you shouldn't be taking any of them apart anyway and especially in the case with these kind of guys where they're they're put together in a basically in a way where you'd have to be destructive with it to take it apart you, you don't really have much of a choice and um but you could try to be really careful getting these caps out because they're just pressed in but yeah, probably going to end up with something like that where you actually damage it. And, um, you know, if you're in the position where you are potentially going to squash the cell or puncture the cell, bad news. Because um, if you stick a metal tool through these, it'll short out through the layers of the cell. Things go bad really, really quickly. So you have been warned. Um, yeah, just leave it for idiots like me to take apart. And if there's something, I always say, if there's something gone wrong with it, What's the chances you're going to be able to fix it anyway? Like, you're not going to have a spare MOSFET or something sitting on the bench. And if you're capable of soldering surface mount stuff, you already know what you're doing. You probably don't need my advice anyway. <laughs> um, okay, another little foam pad on the board. Just more physical protection for the cell. Kind of keep the cell nicely sandwiched in. That's pretty good. Pretty normal that they do that. As expected, we've got a couple of MOSFETs here and... Doesn't look like any inductors. Although we've got the board screwed down. And there's looking onto the board. Yep, pretty much exactly as we expected. We have got a small inductor here, but that will be part of the charging circuit. So most likely this is gonna be the charge controller, this guy here. That's the inductor that will be part of the the switch mode section of the, um, the charge circuit. Cause it's only a little tiny inductor. And then you have these two MOSFETs over here. 
and they're what's actually pulsing the battery onto the atomizer to give you your effective wattage. So this is a PWM mod, and when you're pushing the button to change the power levels, you're still getting full battery voltage, you're just getting pulses of battery voltage in varying width to give you the average power. Um, so pretty straightforward, and you can see how simple, simple, simple the circuit is, and that's all you need, because you can't tell it's pulsing, it's just, it's too fast, and the, the coil's so slow to react, any, any heating element's gonna be way slower than what this is switching at, so you're not gonna notice, and it works really well, and um, it's cheap and easy to make. It is conformally coated, so you can definitely see the shininess there. We'll do a quick zoom in. Are we focused? Yeah, I think we're all right. Uh, shiny on the components there. So, yep, I'm sure that's got a conform conformal coating on it, which is good. It just gives it some protection from ingress. Nice, neat, simple layout. That USB socket looks strong. Flying down on the board. We've got four attachment points. I always say I like the four attachment points. Um, just makes for a stronger socket. So, you know, when you accidentally wiggle the plug putting it in, you're not breaking the socket off the board. Um, you can see the sprung contacts there as you pull on the wires. Oh, I'm not even in frame. Yeah, so nice simple arrangement. The only thing that is not fantastic. I'm always a little bit sketchy on the switches when they're mounted upright on the board. It just seems like you've got more of a bending moment there that can break it off the board. Um, it's got a nice stubby little switch though, and it's it's really flat mounted on the board. Like it's not sitting up on its pins. It's right flat against the board, so it should be okay, I think. And one thing I will mention, just as a usage thing, the battery light on the switch thing bugs me because you, can, you can't you can see the the color of the switch while you're firing because your finger's on it and it's pointing entirely the wrong direction. So I feel like they should come up with something. Someone should do something better where there's a light shining up. Something you can see while you push the button and vape it and you can just see in your peripheral vision the color for what your battery light is because you, you push a button, you fire it, and it's lighting up with the color of what's left in your battery as your battery indication, but you can't see it. And then you turn it around and you have to, well, it doesn't stay on for long enough for you to see it. They could just leave the light on a bit longer, but it just goes off as soon as you let go of the button. So then you have to actually push the button just as a tester to see what your battery levels at. <laughs> I don't know. It's just a bit goofy from a usage point of view, I think. I'm going to take these screws out and I've, don't know what that will do. I guess that will release this magnetic ring. Or what have we got? It's probably just a steel ring and magnets into the atomizer. Okay, so I don't know what those screws do. <laughs> Unscrew them and nothing's kind of moving. I don't know. I would say it would release kind of part of this assembly, this AFC and steel ring there. I'm not too fussed about that, to be honest. Now I did notice something a little bit more interesting is it's th this sat for a little while without me using it and you can see all that condensation and um, just a bit of leakage. You know how tanks weep when you just leave them with liquid in them and they've got humid air going through and that kind of the, the liquid collects the water because it's hydroscopic and then you get some leakage down. So this had a little puddle of liquid sitting there just because I hadn't used it for, for a while and the tank's sitting there with liquid in it. And I noticed there's, it's wet around those contacts. I don't know if you can see that, but I can definitely see liquid sitting in between that solder joint well, on the pin on the base of the top cap assembly. So um, that's not real good. I'm not sure about the sealing in between these pins. You might find yeah, you could get liquid. That's going to be bad, isn't it? If you're getting liquid dripping down past these pins, it'll just drip directly onto the board. So it has got some conformal coating, but that's not um, guaranteed to protect it. It won't protect it long term. It just kind of helps. Uh, so it's probably not great that we can already see liquid going through those pins. That's a bit of a bit of a bummer. Looks like I've got some kind of glue or sealant. It's not a sleeve like I thought it was. It's some kind of hard sealanty stuff that they've put on the cap. 
So that's not bad. That's an extra little thought they've had there that they've put a little ring of something. It's quite hard, hard compound. And then put the caps in, in the hopes that it will seal up that cap and stop any ingress around there, which I doubt you'd get while well, you've got open holes there anyway for venting. So what's that going to help? Nothing. Yeah, so do be aware because you've got open holes. Uh, if you drop the bottom end of this mod into liquid and some went in, it's going to go all through the device because it's just going to go straight in through those holes. Cell is labeled as an R23600, so 23600 size, 3.7 volt, of course, normal voltage, 11.1 .1 watt hour, which should be, why does this always mess with my head? Uh, so that'd be three times 3.7, which should be, yeah, 11.1, .1, yeah. Okay, so it's a 3,000 3, milliamp hour rated cell. Kind of a no name. There's no manufacturer name on this cell at all that I can see. So we'll stick that in the CBA and we'll do a couple of discharges on it and we'll see. Oh, we're going to have to check current on this as well. We'll check capacity, of course, to make sure it is actually doing this 11.1 .1 watt hour that it claims because sometimes they're labeled uh, higher than they really are we'll check the capacity we'll also have to check the current to see whether it can put out enough current to support this 80 watts because that's a lot that's a lot of current for one cell that's um yeah well over 20 amp uh think about this for a second 3.7 say say if it was at three volts um, it's going to be, what, thir no, 30 amp. Hold on. Come on, brain, Jesus. It's basically 80 divided by 3 is going to be how many amps, you know, at its highest when the cell's almost dead. So that's a fair bit of current, a lot of current for a little cell. So we'll do a high current discharge on it and check the capacity. And that's about all I'll do with it, I reckon. I'm not going to bother too much testing the output or doing efficiency and all that sort of stuff. Efficiency actually should be really good on these because of pulse width modulated. It's just an on or off. So the only losses you have are through the MOSFETs, basically the MOSFET, MOSFET resistances. And um, MOSFETs are so good these days. Their on resistance is so low. You, your losses through these guys are going to be basically neg negligible or very low. Shouldn't be much at all. Maybe a couple of watts. Uh, at flat out so yeah it should be quite efficient won't bother testing it and that's what we have inside the Marvos T pretty straightforward little guy I don't know so if you guys like pod devices where you can't use your own atomizer I think it's a good little kit it's well matched I don't know about running it at the full 80 watts but yeah probably a decent little decent little start into direct lung at least because there's nothing you need to do apart from buy coils for it you don't need to match anything you just set the wattage and away you go not bad for that um for me personally i don't know i'm not uh, i don't really like the fill methods that much and you got to pop the tank off to do it as well it's you know definitely not as easy as just popping the cap open on a proper atomizer and that's about all i've got for you okay we will leave it at that cheers guys thanks for watching